Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are hosting the final webinar in the Optimize Your Organization series. My name is Kirsten, and I'm part of the team here at Premier Development Partners. Today, we are joined by Steve Hendricks, who's the founder at Hendricks CIO Strategic Services, LLC, and he is going to discuss cybersecurity, why your company's future depends on it. One quick housekeeping note before we dive in, there is a question and answer time at the end of the presentation, uh, but you can feel free to enter your questions into the chat box whenever they pop up. Uh, you can send them to everyone or directly to me, it doesn't matter. Um, and then I will present all of the questions to Steve at the end. Um, so without further ado, Steve, go ahead and take it away. Great, thanks Kirsten. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm Steve Hendricks. Premier asked me to put together a short presentation on cybersecurity. So let's get into it. So the, the cybersecurity topic is wide ranging. I put together a list based on what I think small to medium sized businesses need for their world and to potentially improve upon what you already have in place. You should have a pretty good idea on what cybersecurity is about, the current threats, what you can do to put in place some basic steps. You'll talk to the barriers in implementing and what things you should do for peace of mind at the end of the presentation. A little about us, we help technology get on track with the business and help the business work better with technology. I have over, I have over two decades of corporate senior IT management experience and going on five years as a boutique consulting firm. Spent most of 2020 as interim IT director for a client and drove the process to hire the replacement. And I've also been involved in two active breaches for both a small and a mid-sized company. You'll see a list of notable projects and you can tell they're a little bit more on the strategic side, uh, but I've touched everything from dealing with the hardware software side, as well as the um, senior leader, leader management side. So what is cybersecurity? So here's the very technical definition of it, but really it's about how do you keep out the bad guys while at the same time protecting information that is critical to running the business. Everything is tied to technology in some way, shape, or form. And here's a list of some interesting facts. The first one, the volume of new malware being created daily is staggering. For those of you who don't know what malware is, it's really malicious software that its only purpose in life is to find a way into your organization and wreak havoc. The second bullet point is probably the most important. Average malware event recovery costs between $120,000 and $2.5 million for small to medium sized businesses. Most companies aren't budgeting for this cost and as a result, it could put them out of business for some type of cyber, should some type of cyber threat materialize. These recovery costs could include paying some type of ransom, plus the challenges of getting everything back up and working again. No company is immune, and there are teams of threat actors actively probing your organizations right now. Now we get into current cyber threats. Phishing is the most prevalent as it attempts to steal credentials, whether it is access to the corporate network or your personal bank account. We've all gotten spam from Bank of America asking us to enter our username and password because they detected fraudulent activity. Vishing uses your phone where someone impersonates somebody that you trust and is looking for credentials. Smishing is a text message. Spear phishing is targeting members of your organization directly and whaling is going after the C-suite or higher level management. Serving the web is an avenue for threat actors to get in. Today, just visiting a website can download malware behind the scenes as part of an ad appearing or by installing extensions, which are small programs usually used to make the browser more productive. Ransomware is malware that will encrypt data so you can no longer use it. You are then charged a fee to unlock it. And mal spam is the delivery of malware through your email system. If you outsource your IT to a third party, more than likely they will install applications to help support you. Those applications are usually licensed to them via a software company. A recent case of having the software company hacked allowed the threat actors to access all the clients that the third party company was supporting. Work from home usually uses non corporate technology, which isn't subject to the same security requirements that corporate technology is. 
that home technology may also be used by other members of the family and things may be installed on that computer that no one knows about. Account takeover is the hacking of an account through the use of previously stolen credentials found on the dark web or by one of the phishing options previously discussed. Third party providers aren't necessarily third party IT support. In the case of Target a few years ago, it was their HVAC company that had access to Target's internal network. New threats on the horizon. Artificial intelligence is poised to do amazing things in the future, but will also become a weapon for the bad guys. We've all seen the fake Tom Cruise video where an actor did the voice, but Tom Cruise's face appeared. It wasn't Tom Cruise. Your mobile device is becoming the new attack surface. I've noticed an uptick in weird text messages arriving. Perhaps you have as well. In some cases, those messages are successful in taking over the phone where people are storing more and more confidential information. Android phones are particularly susceptible to this threat. So on to my view of the minimum state all businesses should try to achieve. Every device in your corporate network needs to be updated consistently. It is a basic IT blocking and tackling event, yet some organizations don't take the time to do it. Out of date hardware that is no longer supported can be a key to take over. Everyone has heard about antivirus. Invest in technology that is the next generation, which doesn't rely just on definitions of malware, but more in the patterns on how it executes. Web traffic filtering is a must. Everyone using a browser needs to have something on the corporate network examining what is coming in and going out via the web. People are the weakest link. They need periodic security awareness training, quarterly or semi-annual works best, along with testing. You should require more than just the password to access the network and systems. Multi-factor authentication requires not only the username and password, but requires something you don't know, which is usually a one-time code delivered via text message. I would recommend using it for your personal accounts as well. Everyone should be backing up their systems. The real key is whether or not all the information needed to rebuild the systems is available. An even bigger requirement is whether or not it will restore and how long it will take. Incident response and business continuity plans are key in knowing how to proceed if a malware event enters your organization. And last, make sure you have a cyber insurance policy. This policy assumes you are abiding by the requirement that will help reduce the costs associated with a breach of data and loss. Now we get into the ideal state, and it's really all the minimum plus a few other technolo technology enhancements that are expensive, but can help minimize and recover faster. Typically, these items are monitored 24 by 7 as malware events will sometimes happen on weekends and holidays when your internal IT team isn't watching. Challenges in achieving the minimum state. Cost will always be an issue when getting to the minimum cybersecurity state, mainly because there's little return on investment. Where it shined is when an event occurs. And is it a matter of when? Um, it is a matter of if, but when. IT is typically understaffed and overworked. This causes the normal blocking and tackling to fall by the wayside. Work from home and asking associates to enhance their security can lead to resistance. However, if they have access to the corporate network via VPN, it shouldn't be a choice. If you outsource your IT, you will never hear that the company is shorthanded. It will manifest itself with longer resp response times and delays in getting tasks completed. There is a mindset that adding all the security creates productivity challenges. In some cases, it is true, so a balance must be achieved. Every company will be different. Cyber threats aren't personal. It's a business and can be very lucrative for the bad guys. Check your IT agreements for limitations so you are aware of what is covered 
and what is not, plus the damage liability limits. Every organization has an old piece of software, aging hardware, et cetera. Recognize that your IT teams, whether internal or external, have limitations. Address what they are. And COVID created an environment where IT had to throw normal caution into the wind because the business needed to keep going. Associates worked from home. Security restrictions were relaxed to deal with the challenge. Discover what needs to be changed should work from home become normal. Your associates are targets. Continuous education and monitoring will help to minimize the, th the threat. Security should always be on. Make sure your business doors are locked. IT security costs are now the cost of doing business. And the last takeaway is probably the most concerning. The bad guys could be inside of your systems today. If so, they are doing reconnaissance, looking for ways to profit off of the misfortune they are about to unleash. Your next steps, discover where the organization is vulnerable and take steps to improve the security posture. It is never too late to start. Take stock of your policies and agreements. Know the requirements and limits. Plan accordingly. Keep your associates trained and up to date on the latest security threats. It is a small investment that you will reap huge benefits from. Know your requirements for reporting a breach government, banking, and customer agreements. And trust but verify. If IT reports to you, verify that they are doing their job via reporting or get outside help. It isn't about your lack of trust with them. It is about making sure they know what to do. They might not have the experience needed to do it right. And my final thought for you is, can you recover from a cyber incident? And now I'm open for questions. That was okay, Steve, we have a question here. Um, you had mentioned that sometimes outsourced IT can be slower to respond. Um, if that's the case, how can I best protect my business without bringing on a employee to focus only on IT? So in, in every agreement that I have read, involving outsourced IT, there are things that they say they are going to do, whether it's quarterly meetings, monthly meetings, et cetera. Um, in many cases, someone is not doing that. So there should be a, an account representative for that company meeting with whoever might be in charge of the IT side within the organization. Find out what reports they promise to deliver, find out why they're not delivering them and get them to start because that monthly review will show you what kind of calls they're getting, what kind of tickets are being open, and part of their responsibility should be to eliminate whatever those challenges are. I would also ask them if they are managing your IT networks to verify monthly because Microsoft releases patches that they have patched every machine and a list of the machines that they have not. And that includes your firewall, it includes your routers, it includes any other devices that I would call non-desktop server type of, of devices. So everything's in play, assuming that your agreement allows for it to be covered on the maintenance side. That makes sense, thank you. Um, another question is, how should I implement um, these cybersecurity processes without slowing down my employees' ability to work. So that's where I mentioned it, it has to be the balance side. So you, you have to take stock of, you know, the minimum requirements that I kind of put in place. You know, some of those will work for, for some companies and it may not work for others. And it really, this, you think of security and productivity as a slider. Right. If you swing too far to the productivity side, you basically have no security in place. And if you go too far to the security side, you end up having people saying, I can't do my job. So there are going to need to be changes. You know, if I had to pick the biggest thing, 
the, the two biggest items on that list for me would be the multi-factor authentication and also making sure that all your devices are updated. Question, Steve, if you don't mind. Um, in our organization, our computers are company supplied and we outsource our IT. Uh, we all have our personal phones. How do we ensure that the two are co-mingled, so to speak? So it really depends on what you're doing on that phone. So if you're accessing the corporate network, then there should be some type of controls in place to verify that you're on the most recent version of the operating system. So a couple of years ago, I did a presentation for Premier that basically talked about the security risk between an iPhone and an Android. And Android by far, those phones, whether it's a Samsung Galaxy or the other different variations of it, those are the most susceptible phones. But if you don't have access to the corporate network or store passwords on it that would be involved on the corporate side, you basically should be in good shape from a corporate perspective. Email, not so much. I think you have to be wary of things that are asking for you to log into Office 365 and you have no idea why you're even getting this email. That was the, the phishing aspect that I discussed at the very beginning. A lot of that is tied to, to education of your employees. So there are tools out there and there are actually companies that will provide phishing tests to see how many people within an organization would respond to that and use that as a baseline for helping to educate the team. We're seeing it. I'm seeing an awful lot of that lately. Oh, it's and crazy. It's, it's, sure and it, it's, yeah. it's, it's randomly showing up. And, you know, the best thing is, you know, and, you know, Social engineering is what it is, right? So people learn to trust if they see certain keywords. The best thing to do is delete it. But, you know, curiosity killed the cat at the end of the day. Right. So if, if you're running an iPhone, I think you're in really good shape unless you've managed to jailbreak your iPhone, which is frowned upon. And, and jailbreaking, for all those who don't know, is basically saying, I don't want to use what Apple has anymore on from an operating system. I'm going to put this new thing on there. And that's jailbreaking. Android and, and Apple's ecosystem, meaning that you're downloading your apps from their world. Typically, they've been tested. But you can install an app on an Android phone, and it has gone through no security check. And, and that's really the thing to be worried about. Thank you very much. That was helpful. You're welcome. OK, so then we have another question um, that also sort of deals with the topic you're just talking about. Um, they asked, is it wise to test your employees with fake phishing emails or does that instill distrust? So you, there's really a couple ways to do it. I think, you know, with everything you want a baseline, right? And the baseline says, what is my uh, organization's readiness? So sending that email out the first time is saying, you know, if I had nine out of 10 people respond to the phishing request, then you know you've got some serious education challenges ahead of you. I think after it is done, I think you publish information saying this is what we found. And then you bring the team into the process because I think the initial mistrust is a misnomer at this point in time. If you continue to do that without bringing them in and making them part of the solution, that's where the the distrust I think is going to manifest itself. But making them part of the solution, I think, is key. And it's not just existing employees. It's all new employees that are coming in as well. And I would even extend it to any type of vendors that you have that may be coming into your systems also. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give everyone another minute to input their questions into the chat if they have any. Um, but if anyone thinks of a question later, are they able to contact you, Steve? Sure. You can reach me at steve at hcioss.com. I can give Kirsten all that information as well, and I can give you a direct contact phone number for me if you're interested. Perfect. Thank you. And then I'll include that in the, the follow-up email as well that will include this recording. Great. OK, it doesn't look like there are any more questions popping up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's webinar. But thank you so much, Steve, for taking the time to share all of your knowledge on this very, very relevant and timely topic. We really appreciate it.
Thanks for having me. I appreciate it as well. Yeah, of course. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.